Welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor Ellis and this is a secondhand librarian where I talk about bookish things once every two months at this point. <laughs> I just have been really really busy. Um, I run and own a bookstore if you're not familiar with that and so summertime is super busy because I don't have an actual storefront so I do a lot of um, like pop-up events and like festivals and fleas and things like that so Basically, it's just never in traveling on my end, um, but I've been doing a lot of reading also, which is like surprising. I don't know if I just have like the energy in it, like, you know, like manifests itself into me reading all the time, but I've been reading a lot. So I wanted to do kind of like a reading wrap up of like all the books I read in June and like books that I've started to read for this month. Um, and I have a huge TBR stack that I'm going to try to get through and hopefully finish for this month so I can do another video. So we'll see. There might be two videos this month. This might be the only one. <laughs> but I wanted to start off with some of the books that I've read. I'm going to go in order. Um, also, I read a lot of series. Like, I enjoy having something end and then being able to go right into the next one standalones especially in fantasy which is like my major um like genre honestly I love fantasy standalones are so like weird for me <laughs> like I I really rarely read a standalone and if I do I never really like it that much so okay so the first books that I started to read in June I don't have the first one here because I let a friend borrow it but it is the Heartstopper series so I just want to say this is the this is the cutest thing I've ever read. Like are you serious? So basically Charlie is every guy that I've ever loved. They look just like him. Um so I was already obsessed with him, but then Nick is like this super hot rugby player who speaks fluent French and like it's just so sweet to Charlie and I'm obsessed with them. Um, Alice Oz Ozman, I think that's how I pronounce her name. She actually has like a um, special edition coming out and it's signed. So I might have spent a lot of money on it, but I don't regret it. So basically this is about Nick and Charlie and Charlie is openly out in his school. It's an all boys school. Um, he was outed kind of accidentally by a friend, which is like debatable. But basically, he's openly gay, whereas Nick is, doesn't even know his sexuality. Like, he's still kind of trying to figure it out. Um, but he just knows that he, like, loves Charlie. And it is really, really sweet. So there's a lot of, like, cutesy romance tropes and things like that. But I also like that it goes a lot deeper when it comes to, like, um, I will say, like, trigger warnings. There's definitely talks of, like, suicide, self-harm eating disorders like it just spans the gauntlet of like in my opinion unfortunately I feel like a coming of age story for a teenager especially in the LGBT community and I just really wish that books like these were available when I was in like high school and middle school because I feel like I would have felt just so comforted <laughs> super comforted um I identify as pansexual. My past partner of five years was trans. My husband right now, he is cis, straight guy. So I think when people see me, they do not expect me to be on the, you know, the spectrum when it comes to that stuff. But I just feel like if I had these books in high school, I would have been that much more confident in just like who I was, you know? So I highly, highly recommend it. Like it is just, it's so, so, so cute. It's so cute. Like, look at their little faces. And they're just so, like... Ugh. If you haven't read Heartstopper, please do. After that, I kind of... I don't have it right here because I actually sold it on my site. But I did not finish One Last Stop. So that's by Casey McQuinton. She wrote Red, White, Royal Blue. And I was pretty... Pretty, like... Disappointed, I want to say. Like... I was really, really looking forward to that, like, hot lesbian stuck on the subway, 
what's her backstory i need to know but it was just so boring and dragged on forever and i just really wanted her to get off the subway and it never happened or at least it didn't happen in a time frame that i thought thought was like feasible like i wanted to hook up but you can't do that on the h train you know what i mean like it was just ugh, <laughs> not my thing i don't the plot that made it interesting the plot twist that made it interesting like it's just never been my thing so i didn't finish it whatever um the next book i read i don't have it with me again because i let a friend borrow it you see a trend um it was the maidens so the silent patient was and still is to this day one of my favorite thrillers because i feel like it was one of the rare books that i did not see the plot twist coming like i genuinely had no idea that that was what was happening and so when it did happen it just blew my mind because i feel like it was so cleverly done um the maidens was a mess now i will say i'm an emotional reader so once i finished reading it i was like uh I finished reading at the reading writing retreat that I host so I was with like a few girls at that time and I was like y'all like this book is so good I was buddy reading it with another friend and she gave it 3.5 stars and I was like a little shook about that but I, I don't listen to other people's like reviews I normally I view it for myself I mean some girl gave A Quarter Thorns and Roses like one star and I watched her video and she was like this is trash but I'm like I need to be buried with these books like that is how I feel so I don't really listen to other people's reviews um so like when I finished it I went on Goodreads and I was like this is five stars for me like I thought it was pretty good I thought it was really interesting but it is one of those books that like the more you sit with it the more you see holes and like the like it the the emotional high from finishing it dies down and then you're just like what the fuck did I read because that's how I felt a few days after and I think I actually changed my um star to a four but I said like yeah this is like a 3.5 for me um it was just doing too much there were too many themes too many layers didn't really understand the plot was at the end weird gross didn't really care for that part like there was just so many things being tied in i feel like the maidens weren't even really part of it other than to be just like murder victims you know what i mean like there wasn't i wanted more backstory i wanted more interesting things to happen she was i don't know there there was like a child essentially that she was like getting like starry i don't he did a lot he put a lot in this book I will say the good part about it was that I like that he linked the silent patient into this one. So I I thought that was really, really cool. I love that. It made me want to read the silent patient again. So I'm hoping that as he continues, he continues to kind of like make their stories interconnect in a way. Not too much, but like enough for me to be like, oh, that's cool. Like I remember this person from this book and like what they had going on at this time. So um that was like the only redeeming quality but he did too much i'm gonna let him to try again next that i read <laughs> now this series y'all is so good so good like i read the first book in a night um let me just see it's almost 500 pages i read it in a night and then i went right out to the bookstore right before they closed they're like, do you need help finding anything? I'm like, nope, ran right upstairs and got the next two books because I just knew I was going to need to finish them immediately. And it is the Curse Breaker series. So the first one is A Curse So Dark and Lonely. It was so good. I really, really like the series so much. Um, I don't understand what's up with like the new age fantasy writers just talking about Beauty and the Beast all the time never really was like my favorite disney movie i'm not really a disney stan to begin with so there's that but this was done so fucking well and i feel like it was done well because it was kind of like it made the beauty and the beast mythology like real in the way that there were real consequences you know what i mean like i feel like you don't really talk about what happens when he turns into a beast like of course like he can kill you or whatever but they don't talk about 
what actually goes on and that's why i think i like this so much because it was pretty gruesome it was pretty dark um so basically there's harper she lives in dc and their world is parallel um to our world so like the the fantasy world's parallel to us so she lives in dc with her brother jonas is it jonah or jonas i haven't read these in like oh a little bit um but she lives with her brother and their mom is like dying of um, cancer. And so he's like out trying to get money because they have these loan sharks on their ass because their dad made like some terrible financial decisions. Of course, he's not there. Um, and so while they're out, she sees this guy like attacking this woman. And so she doesn't even really think about it. She just like goes over and like attempts to like hit him. To make him stop and the guy grabs her arm and then they disappear it's not jonas or jonah it's jake sorry um he grabs her arm they disappear and then they're in the fantasy world so the guy that grabs her arm is commander gray who i am in love with and then they go to the castle where prince ren who he's a little bit of a sad boy but i have a soft spot for them um prince ren is under a curse he was cursed by this evil seductress Lilith who is getting revenge on his family because his dad um kind of like exterminated her species um magic's like not looked upon well in in this like world and Lilith is one of the last remaining people that has magic she seduces him curses him and so every season Prince Ren goes under the spell becomes a beast but it's like a very frightening beast and also it goes into detail about like how he woke up one season and had murdered his entire family and like had to live with that or like the fact that he murdered best friends and like people that he loved and cared about like it was really crazy to me I think that it was done really well because it really made the stakes feel just that much higher knowing like what he had already lost um and so long story short they're just basically going about to try and make Harper fall in love with Ren so that she can break the curse, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I really like this too because like all the extra characters, so like Harper, Gray, and Ren are like the main focus, or at least they should be the main focus. But Gray on his own is just like so fucking great. And when I read the second book, so the second one is A Heart So Fierce and Broken, it goes between Gray's point of view um, and Harper. Harper's a little bit and then Ren. So it's pretty much Gray and Ren. I love their relationship. It is so toxic and so convoluted, but it's also just like true brotherhood. I'm obsessed. I really am. Um, but when I saw that it was going between Gray and then it goes between uh, Leah Mara, who was another character, I was kind of like, ugh, I don't want to read about, like, Grey. Like, I like him, but he's kind of, like, a side character. I hate when they do this. But I didn't feel like it with this. Like, he gave me main character energy, and he was, like, really coming into his own. I just imagine he's sexy as fuck, so I think that's probably why I was like, mm, I like Commander Grey. Um, but another thing is that Harper has a disability, and her brother, Jake, is gay, and he's dating Noah, who is a black guy. So it's very interesting to see like how they are in our modern day society and how they're ostracized for being gay and Noah's ostracized for being black. But then they come to this world and they're not ostracized for those things. They're ostracized because Jake's an outsider. They don't know him. And Noah in modern time was um, a doctor. So he knew like healing things and all the other stuff and so they thought that Noah had magic like that was what was like being held against him so I thought that was kind of like cool to see that they still dealt with stuff but it wasn't you know modern day bullshit that they would have to have dealt with so basically uh, I think you should get the series it's so good the author is doing like a writing um a signing I think it might have already passed it was this month I was gonna go down and see my parents in DC and stop in Maryland to see her but I didn't it was really good highly suggest the Curse Breaker series um so next up I read there's a lot of books in this 
my girl Jennifer is doing a lot always so I'm not surprised but the next book I read was um the origin series I don't think this is the first one but the Lux series so hot alien Damon super super really badass bitch Callie are like doing their whole love romance thing um Area 51's involved, the DOD's involved. It's just pretty much a love story with aliens. Why wouldn't I love that, you know? Um, I stopped reading it because there was one character in it that was just so fucking obnoxious. He was like a villain, but like the villain that just keeps coming back. Like you're like, wow, I killed you multiple times and you're still here. Like what are you doing here you should have died at least three books ago and I don't want to read about you anymore so I stopped I was listening to the audiobook on my way to the Catskills and the woman that read Damon's part don't do it anymore please I beg of you just not your thing um so yeah it's a good story it's a good book but like I wouldn't say you need to go out and buy it like immediately it's just like cute fluff whatever but what are you gonna do um, so next one, I reread A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I went out and actually bought the really pretty one because I'm obsessed. There's cute little Feyre, there's the unnamed wolf. <sighs> I'm back, and I'm not restarting this video over, so I'm just going to keep continuing. Basically... I started reading over again A Court of Thorns and Roses and I thought it was really interesting because I haven't reread it since I first read it earlier this year um and so I feel like I missed a lot of things like I was firmly in the camp that um Tamlin sucked yes but I felt like he didn't deserve everything that he had done to him I felt like everyone else was like pretty pretty crazy to him you know but when I was rereading this and saw a lot of things that were happening especially um at the end of the second one which is my favorite of course Miss and Fury um there were things that I had completely forgotten had taken place and I was like oh yeah fuck Tamlin like he's a piece of shit and he needs therapy and he needs to get over himself and favor is her own person and I'm sick of him so yeah Nothing really changed on that front. Um, but those are pretty much all of like the paper or the like physical books that I read. My husband was very generous and bought me one of the paper white Kindles. I had the old generation and it was very old. Um, but my Kindle is pink, which I'm even happier about. But basically, y'all, I've been reading the craziest shit. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> like even for my, even for me, I'm like, all right we're we're doing this and there's no coming back but that's where we are so i read um i read survive the night riley sager's new thriller that was for my book club meeting that i have coming up it was good but like it was okay like i feel like i put it smack dab in the middle of his books nothing's gonna top final girls for me but it wasn't as bad as that weird one where they were in a hotel and it was just like rich people eating organs. Cool. I then read Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. That was another buddy read. Um, real crazy y'all. So basically Pike is like 38 and then he ends up falling for his son's girlfriend who's 19. When I read the premise, I, I literally said to myself, absolutely not. I won't be that person to give this girl views and ratings and buy her book. But I did. And I'm not gonna say I hated it. So you be the judge of that if you want to read Birthday Girl about some 40-year-old man and some 19-year-old. I, I feel gross even saying it. There's nuances to it for sure. Um... I really, really wish the author made her age a little bit older. I don't think that it would have changed much with their dynamic. Um, 
other than just making me feel more comfortable reading it and telling people that I read it. So the next one that I read was Rhapsodic, Rhapsodic. Um, and it's basically about some hot guy with wings and a really pretty girl that everyone thinks is beautiful. Okay, there is more to it now that I'm like thinking about it. Um, it starts off with her father pretty much sexually assaulting her, her stepfather sexually assaulting her and she murders him. And so then she calls in a favor to, um, she calls in a favor to kind of like an intergalactic being. Um, God, I'm literally forgetting his name. So I'm super sorry. The Bargainer, duh, it's literally the name of the series, the Bargainer series. Uh, she calls in a favor, this guy comes and like cleans it up because he can see that like she murdered him for a reason. Um, and basically from that, they just kind of formulate a relationship. People said it's a slow burn. It's not. I knew that we were going to have sex probably within a hundred pages and I was right. So nothing too surprising there. Um, and then the last thing I just want to talk about. So I've been reading so much fan fiction y'all <laughs> it's a problem because i feel like i'm regressing in age like this is 15 year old taylor who's watching twilight in a darkened room with like a family size bag of doritos that was my life and now i'm just like back on harry potter fanfic for no reason i had no idea that draco malfoy, malfoy could be so fucking hot but here we are 2021 he's the best guy and draco deserved more than what jk rowling gave him i don't even accept her version of events as canon anymore because she lost that privilege when she became an awful person publicly um but i have read breathman's so fucking good i swear like this was probably one of the best fan fictions i've ever read in my entire life but it is only trumped by Manicold is I don't know how that's how you pronounce it Manicold but it's about Draco and Hermione now when I first saw what it's about I was kind of like I don't know like I'm getting in weird territory here and I just feel a little gross about it um there were all these trigger warnings and stuff before starting it and I'm like I don't know if I can handle this but when I say it's one of the best things that I've ever read I am not saying that lightly. It was one of the best things I've ever read and it's absolutely a crime that it cannot be published because this girl should be making major coins off of that book that she gave us. It was amazing. It was also like 700 pages and I literally skipped work an entire day. I had entire plans. I skipped work, I stayed in bed and I read this damn fan fiction and I do not regret it. Please read it. It's very, really good that breath mint and now i'm finishing all you want i don't know if you guys know about like alpha and omega situations this is all new to me feels really weird i just don't want them to continue to say my mate alpha omega nodding Ugh. <laughs> it's just it's really disgusting but i'm still reading it 94 percent through so <laughs> is it really that gross to me i guess not so yeah that's the rundown of all the books i've read all the books that um I did not finish which was only one I think and yeah I have so many books I want to read I'm gonna like force myself to stop with the fan fiction situation because I just I know like there's so much and I just don't want to be I don't want to be that girl there's nothing wrong with being that girl absolutely if anything I'm envious of them but because my job requires me to read like other books sometimes I feel like I just I gotta get myself out of it so yeah if you guys watched till the end thank you so much I'm sorry for the little thing in the middle where my camera told me I was out of storage whatever um and I'm probably gonna do another video pretty soon and talk about my current TBR list and like what I'm actually reading it's a lot of fantasy again I'm so sorry I feel like I should just make it known all I read is fantasy, all I read is smut, sometimes I read spooky stuff. That's it. So <laughs> I'm hoping that's your jam, but if it's not, I completely understand. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching so much, and I hope you have a great day.
day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.